My name is Lynn Allen. I was born with hemophilia, which is a bleeding disorder. Uh, had it my whole life, obviously. During my first knee replacement back in 1978, uh, I was infected by HIV and hepatitis C through the blood supply, which had become contaminated. That means that I've lived with, uh, with HIV and AIDS for my entire adult life, and uh, probably with hepatitis C as well. I'm R.D. Winthrop, Roger D. Winthrop. I live in Lansing. I was asked by Perry Bullard, who was the um, Democratic representative from Ann Arbor at the time, and a very progressive, strong voice for cannabis reform in this state from the very beginning to um, step in when John Sinclair um, stepped away from NORMA, which is the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Um, we passed the legislature here by a combined 133 to 1 vote. On October 10th, I think it was, we passed the House unanimously to provide cannabis to cancer patients. Ran for two years, got sunsetted, lapsed, went away, wasn't anybody out there to go back and do what I had done in 78, 79 and repeat this process. And the legislature essentially turned its back on us for the next 30 years until Proposal 1. My name is Brandon DeGia. Shortly after I had been injured, I'd spoken to a number of other quadriplegics and paraplegics who had been in you know, they're going through what I go through. A lot of them told me that they smoke marijuana and it helps with a lot of those symptoms and they find that they have to take fewer um, pharmaceuticals in order to, uh, you know, remain at, a, remain at a baseline level. and then thousands of the calyxes will form at each of the nodes, and the nodes that are close together, all the calyxes will run together into one big, uh, one big bud. I'm running an operation taking care of five patients. For each patient, I'm allowed to grow 12 plants, so I've got 60 plants uh, that I can keep at different stages. And the flowering room has got 24 plants in it, they're all of the Northern Lights strain, and they're being grown with a sea of green technique. They're about one and a half weeks done to flower, so that's when they'll be harvested, dried, and cured, and then they'll be ready for patient use. I have a pretty wide variety of, of patient, patient symptoms. Some of my patients have chronic pain, Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis. One of my patients is undergoing chemotherapy treatment. I've tried to pick strains that I think will be, be helpful for them, but if they are looking for a different strain or something specific, then I can, I can find that for them too. 3,006,820 people voted in support of Proposal 1, uh, which is a rather intricately worded and in many respects imperfect um, ballot proposal, which essentially allows uh, limited access to um, enrolled patients and registered caregivers. People can apply to the state of Michigan to be either a patient or a caregiver. What you need to do first is to have a condition that qualifies you to be certified by the Department of Public Health. You know, my doctor said that maybe if you smoke more marijuana, we could get you off a lot of the meds that you're currently on. It's legal for patients and caregivers only if they are within the amount specified by law. So that's two and a half ounces of 
dried, usable marijuana, or up to 12 plants. There's an application on the State of Michigan website that is pretty straightforward. I did a lot of um, like looking into the law online, and um, as soon as they had posted it on the uh, Michigan uh, Department of Community Health website, um, you know, I downloaded the forms I needed to download. Eventually, you get one of these cards back from the health department. This one is mine. It says that I'm qualified to have the stuff uh, to grow and to maintain it. I also uh, grow for an, a friend uh, who also has hemophilia, also has AIDS. Um, and that allows me to have twice as much on hand. A patient can be their own caregiver or they can elect to have someone else as a caregiver. The role of the caregiver is basically to obtain medical marijuana either by growing it themselves or by buying it from someone and uh, giving it to the patient and the patient will then usually reimburse some amount that's uh, less than, usually less than what it normally costs to go buy it on the street. A caregiver can be their own patient and have up to four others for a total of five. I got these uh, labels on here that say medical marijuana for medical use only, not for resale, keep out of reach of children. And uh, it uh, allows me to identify the medical strain, the quantity, the date that it was, um, that it was canned. Well, the, the big problem is that it's silent on supply, or how it gets to the patient. There's nothing in there about how you got seeds, how you get the plants to start with. I had to get the uh, seeds, and I did that by ordering through the internet from outside the country. I mean, it's supposed to fall out of the sky into your tomato patch. Where do you get your first seeds? Where do you get your first, where do you get your uh, marijuana from? Somebody has to make it. You're not going to be able to go down to Rite Aid and get it. You have to find somebody who has the skill to produce it for you and keep producing it for you on a regular basis. You can't just throw your seeds on the ground, come back in 12 weeks and expect to have a product that doesn't work that way. It's a lot tougher than tomatoes. Although it's legal for me to go and buy it from anybody, it's still illegal for them to sell it to me if they don't have permission from the state. I mean, if we've been uh, driven underground for 30 years, and we have been, um, how do you find a provider? Not everyone knows growers that they can trust, and it really is an issue of trust. You have to buy from some shady folks sometimes. And that's very scary and very dangerous for a lot of people. I mean, if I use a wheelchair, I'm going to go up to, you know, to a, a dark, poorly lit place and deal with a drug dealer whom I don't know. You don't know what's in the stuff, first of all. You know, if there has been stuff added to it. Um, it, it it's a, you know, it's a problem for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, currently I'd have to pay, you know, like 25, 30 bucks for a quarter of, you know, pot that's questionable at best. Um, coming out of the city, and that's just that's not, not what I want to do. Not all patients are going to be able to be supplied under this law. We would like to have um, uh, means to supply emergency stocks. Uh, we would like to take surpluses and convert them to edibles or oils or make them available um, in places of need. Uh, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to do that under the laws that exist now. So people can look at you can buy them right at Barnes and Noble. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, sir. I have a Bible. I didn't bring my Instead book. of me teaching each and in, each individual person as they walked in how to get legal and how to grow, I started holding um, free courses. So it's a three-day course. Um, it's two hours each day. Usually it lasts a little bit longer. I roll through the process of how to get legal, 
um, seed selection, uh, seed germination, cloning, uh, temperatures, EC, pH, how to handle pests. I basically what I put together is a is a informational package that will have people not make mistakes for 90 days and they just let the plant um, do what it's supposed to do. So well, I became pretty popular for medicinal marijuana. <laughs> a lot of stores won't let you talk about medicinal marijuana in their store, but I don't know how to grow tomatoes and peppers and all that stuff. I'm just, I'm a straight up medicinal marijuana guy. So. Hi there. How you guys doing? Just some candy bars for seven. Go. Let's go check out my dad's yeah. It's a monster. I give it all to everybody for free. And like I said, that's I do it because, uh, one, I have to teach everybody because people won't spend money with me if they don't know how to grow. And then, two, they come back next door and then they buy all my equipment from Hydro World. This is my own seed stream that I've created. 522. 522. It's amazing how big them them buds are dry right down to like dry right down, man. So much yeah, um, doctors that won't sign a medical marijuana recommendation, a lot of them will write prescriptions for oxycotton, Vicodin, Percodan, Percocet, a lifetime prescription for all all the like harsh narcotics, but they don't like to um, they don't like to hand out a medical marijuana recommendation. Legalize that shit! <laughs> Legalize marijuana! Legalize it! It's just grass! That's all it is, is grass! It's grass! Please legalize! There are many who supported the medical marijuana referendum who would like to see marijuana legalized. This didn't do that. There may be room for advocacy in that area, and I know some people are, are eagerly awaiting that opportunity. But right now, it's legal only in a medical context and with limited amounts. If, if the DEA, which is the classifying source, the DEA, who are police agents, get to play doctors in real life, not on TV, in real life it is the DEA that has placed cannabis in Schedule 1. That's not a medical determination. The, the, the medical community had nothing to do with making that determination. So the DEA decides cannabis can't be medicine. What does that mean? It means it can't be medicine. It means no prescriptions anywhere, even here. You don't get prescriptions for it here. You get a recommendation that allows you to go to a private provider like me, for instance, who will provide you, if you are a registered patient, with what you need for a price. No prescriptions, no pharmacies. It's not a pharmaceutical. It's not handled that way at all. I think that people are biased against marijuana in general even legal use. Too many people are back into the 60s and the 70s, you know, they're hippie, hippie freak, freaks, and they're, they're scared to death that the hippies are gonna overrule and we're gonna have high Krishna at the airports and everything before we turn around again. And that's not, not what happens at all. A lot of people are more concerned about the police, you know, kicking in the door and taking it to tell the truth. <laughs> I don't know too much about it, Sergeant, but I got a hunch. I don't think I made a mistake. Yeah. What do you think? No, sir, it's no mistake. Marijuana. Should be pointed out that we're still a persecuted minority. We're still second-class citizens. Uh, Michigan police are still shooting cannabis users in their home for, in this year, that uh, we had a 19-year-old Grand Valley student shot in a raid that uh, resulted in a felony indictment and conviction for this poor kid. He's got two busted ribs, a collapsed lung, a felony conviction. Over three grams, 3.3 grams of cannabis. You go through communities around the state and they have three or four bars and you know people are, are driving away intoxicated. That's not a great thing. Alcohol is a far more severe problem than marijuana has been traditionally. Uh, but they don't really distinguish between those, uh, by and large, within the law, the law enforcement community. There's 5,000 years of uh, medical history with uh, marijuana. 5,000. Uh, the last for the last 70, uh, it's been uh, illegal in the United States. The prohibition of marijuana co coincided with the end of alcohol prohibition. The writing was on the wall before alcohol prohibition ended. Uh, there was a fight. 
the decisive vote of the 36th state against prohibition is happy news for the grain raisers of the United States and for many others throughout the land. Uh-oh, there'll be no more scenes such as this. Barrel after barrel of prize whiskeys destroyed by government agents. It's going to be a cold winter for the barrel busters. And during that fight, uh, the federal agency that, that oversaw alcohol prohibition uh, uh, began to villainize uh, marijuana. Chicago lawmen seized a four-acre field of marijuana. Retail value, $4 million. And they face the problem of disposing of the illicit crop before it goes to seed. Sheriff Lohman's answer, call in the Marines. If there's a stigma that's attached, it really ought to be attached to the people who have turned their backs on us, caused so much pain and suffering, sent so many people to jail, caused so much economic disruption in so many lives, for what? For their, so they could get reelected? There are many people out there uh, uh, in chemotherapy for cancer, for example, who can't eat and uh, without using marijuana first. Uh, should we penalize them for having cancer? I, I hope not. You know, should I be penalized because I uh, was blindsided by, uh, by some viruses that nobody even knew existed at the time that I was infected by them? I hope not. One of the, the social concerns is that you know it's a gateway drug and it's going to cause people to move on to cocaine or heroin or what have you, and and that's been shown uh, wrong actually. And the places where tolerance or legalization of marijuana has taken place time and time again, it's, it's the same data, it's the same result uh, each time. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, where it's not legal but it's tolerated and separated, uh, and in California and in Oregon, the rates of uh, hard drug abuse, the rates of alcoholism, and even the rates of recreational marijuana use have all declined. And I think that uh, as a society, even in, in the course of medical training, uh, we're exposed to uh, a lot of propaganda. And I think anytime someone tells you something that they report to be scientific, that you need to know uh, who it is that's talking to you, what they're saying, and why are they saying it the way that they are. And I think if you apply that level of critical thinking, uh, to uh, a lot of the information that's been out there about marijuana, it all breaks down. If I hadn't been able to manage pain, I don't think I'd be alive. Instead of a sharp, like, burning pain uh, from my waist down and through specifically my right leg, um, it's only more of a mild tickle. You have to use common sense and follow the doctor's orders and do what you have to do to, to uh, make your quality, quality of life as positive as you, as you can.